Spencer Lazara hanging out here at, at my home. And I'm on Google Plus hanging out with Mr. Richie Cranny. It's a pleasure, man. I, I, I've known about you guys from my good friends over there in Australia, Skyline Productions. Great people that, that have done a lot of stuff for MMA interviews, helping us go global. And very excited about what you have put together, Wimp to Warrior, a uh, really cool reality show where you take wimps and turn them into warriors to keep it uh, to keep it simple, right? That's right. Yeah, it's um, it's a uh, exciting times here in Australia, and hopefully globally, we want to take this um, overseas for sure. But yeah, the the whole point of this series is to try and <clears throat> excuse me bring MMA into the mainstream. You know, it's it's doing really well, but I need to try and get a crossover of people that want to do this. Sport not just to fight but just to, for fitness and even amateur level and um, the take up and it's been massive in Australia it's exciting it's cool of course you've had so many trials and tribulations making a, I'm sure a living for yourself coming from London and, and really loving martial arts and helping grow it but I'm sure it's been tough right the uh, the monetary grind in this sport is something that's real for everybody yeah absolutely there, there's no you do it for love you don't do it for money Money, that's for sure. Um, the Wimp to Warrior thing has been um, has been a quite a strain financially, trying to run this thing and get it off the ground. But anything you're passionate about, you know, money comes second. Money's money's a bonus, you know. So I, I believe in what I'm doing, and um, I think it's gonna. I mean, you guys, when you guys see the episodes and the series, you'll see the changes this makes in people's lives. It's it's um, pretty inspiring to say the least, actually. Yep. I mean. I, I, for one, can really relate because I've always been an athlete uh, playing other sports, but skin and bones, man, I, I've always been uh, really skinny. And I decided one day, I said, you know, I, I don't want to be this way anymore. I wanted to have some muscle. So I got started doing that, and I've been a fan of MMA. And now I, I can honestly say that I went from wimp to a little bit of a warrior at this point. Nice work. Like uh, yeah, look, it's, it's, um, it's empowering. It really does empower these people, and the, the guys that um, I started with. It, I mean, we had the finale um, just over a week ago, so the series now is the seven weeks leading up to the finale. And these guys were unbelievable. We had two refs here in Australia that ref in the UFC and and professional fights, and they couldn't believe what these guys did. They just went in there, and they're all walking really tall, and they've all said, you know, they're it's every everything in their life has changed in the last six months, which is pretty cool. And, I mean, are these guys coming in? You said you used the word white collar when we talked about it earlier. So you're talking about guys who have day jobs that are coming in. And how are they able to sort of sustain their lives and still really put in the time to, uh, to turn in themselves into martial artists? Look, it's a struggle. It's an absolute struggle. These guys are getting up. There's one guy that commutes, and he gets up at 2.15 every morning to, get, to walk to his train station, get an hour, a 90-minute train to the gym and in training and goes to work. It's it's insane, but it's all part of the journey with these guys. You know, they they're out of their comfort zone for six months, and that in itself is a um, is a massive thing for these guys. And it's tough. Some of the guys moved into state. You know, they've moved from North Queensland down to New South Wales. They've guys from South Australia, West Australia, all moved to to Sydney and just get regular jobs working in like liquor shops and stuff like that just to do the show. Wow. Um, it's insane. You know, two guys put their uni on hold, put their studies on hold just to do it. It's, yeah, it's cool. Did guys have athletic backgrounds at all, kind of, that you had? And, and it's 50 guys, correct? me, Correct? That, that females. Did? Yeah, so I've got – there's females on the show as well. Okay. So um, we've got there, – there was a real mix. I didn't want it to be a Biggest Loser show, and I didn't want it to be a geek show. So I wanted to, to show a broad – base of, of everyone so there's guys that are, are big guys like 140 kilos like some a serious weight loss i've got guys that are real skinny you know been picked on their whole lives i've got females there's there's real geeky guys that have never thrown a punch in their life just sat behind and ate pizza and play on the computer so it's it's showing the public anyone can do this sport and then i've got a guy that's um who's a professional footballer but he's never been never done fine before so i wanted to show the whole spectrum so, yeah, that was a key element. So I had 400 people apply for the series in six days just through my Facebook page. Um, and I invited 50 to the tryouts, and then I selected 32 to start the process. And then there was dropouts through injuries and eliminated a few people, but we finished up with a full fight card. 
Okay, full, so are you able to say how many fights you, you had uh, on yes, the finale? Eight. And I suppose they compete against each other, obviously. They do, yeah. Eight fights. So the way the series works is the first two months, we put them through a, a heap of strength conditioning. Um, a lot of, lot of um, plyometrics, a lot of anything that's basically going to prepare their bodies for the final two months of sparring and stuff. So cause these guys have never done that kind of stuff before. So... Um, first two months of um, strength conditioning and basic drills, you know, get muscle memory working. And then um, after that, I narrowed them down to the final 20. And a lot of that's done through basically injuries. We had a few injuries like ribs and, and knees and stuff like that, just bodies given up. Um, and then um, once that's we've got final 20, I split them into two teams, red team, blue team, and create matchups. And then they train separately for two months until they saw each other on the finale. So it's pretty cool. That's that's awesome, man. I can't wait to catch up and, and continue watching that. I think that's something that we will be embedding at MMAinterviews.tv as well. And then uh, just give a nutshell, a, a quick 20, 30 seconds about yourself. Myself, um, been fighting and training pretty much my whole life. Boxed, through, boxed at school from the age of 11. Took up martial arts at 19, opened my first gym, my, my training school when I was 22. Um, at the age of 25, I met some of the Gracies in London. I was from a purely striking background and uh, discovered jiu-jitsu. Um, and I've been wrestling and grappling ever since. Um, and I've just, I just love MMA. And I just want, I want everyone to do the sport. I just think it's, it's, it's criminal for not people to discover it. You know, it's just, it's given me so much in my life and I, and the people I've got involved, I can see it's changed their life and I want everyone to have this same positive attitude towards Australia the sport. Australia is, is very much a uh, fitness a fit country, correct? I mean, uh, a lot of people are very much into fitness there. They, they are, but we've got the highest, with second after, after the States, um, biggest obesity problem in the world. People don't see that. They, what happens is people come to Australia and they go to um, all the beachside, you know, the tourist spots sure. where people in Australia, cities. they take pride in their appearance. You know, it's like going to Miami. Everyone's in bikinis and stuff. But you go inland and they're, they're, there's a big problem with... Um, Middle America. Beaches. Yeah, exactly. Exactly the same. You know, fast food, you know, unhealthy lifestyles, people not moving enough, basically. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it is definitely a problem here. Um, well, cool, man. I mean, anything else you'd like to say? And, and, and obviously, check out wimptowarrior.com. Follow them on Twitter, wimptowarrior, the number, uh, as the two in the, in the middle there. Anything else? I just, I just want to thank you, for one, for, for helping me support this. And anyone that's into MMA, please watch it. Please Twitter about it. Um, follow us on our site on YouTube. And um, who knows, they might have a Wimp to Warrior opening soon near them, and they can get on board. Definitely looking forward to catching up on that and staying tuned, man. It's such a cool idea, and I wish you the best of luck, man. Um, Thank you. Richie It'd be Cranny. good to catch you after the, after the finale. Like, I'd like to hear what you think about the fights as well. Thank Most definitely. Just... We will do a recap uh, here uh, periodically throughout the season, I think. I think that would be a pretty cool little feature. Yeah. Um, appreciate the time. Everybody check them out, wimptowarrior.com. I'm Spencer Lazara. He's Richie Cranny. Thanks for watching MMA Interviews TV.